please join me in the opening prayer? Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, bringing all creation to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, those of you who are joining us in person, those of you who are online, we're glad uh, that you're here. I want to make a few announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, I want to draw your attention to our, our weekly calendar events coming up this week here at Wesley. 
especially drawing your attention to uh, meetings tomorrow evening, Staff Parish Relations Committee at 545 and Church Council at 7. Uh, Church Council is an open meeting, so you are welcome to come and watch what we do. Um, you know, if you're suffering from insomnia or so forth, that would be a good opportunity for you uh, to, to have that cured. Uh, but you are welcome to join us for Church Council. Right? And for those of you who are involved in those committees, uh, you've been reminded again. Uh, I do want to move on and let you know that uh, next Sunday, not next Sunday, two weeks from today, two weeks from today, June 4th, everybody say June 4th. June 4th. That's annual conference Sunday, and so of course I'll be away. And uh, we do have a guest uh, speaker coming in, uh, Judy Yates, from the Domestic Violence uh, Services uh, Shelter. And uh, she will be uh, sharing uh, a sermon with us about their work and, and for Mission Sunday. I uh, do want to say to make things easier for her and easier on, on us uh, for that day, there will be a single service on June 4th at 10 o'clock. I'm going to say 10 o'clock. Right. That, that gives her an opportunity to only have to share once. It also gives us an opportunity to have some refreshment and some fellowship time afterwards and time to talk to her individually and ask questions if we'd like to do that. So June 4th, single service at 10 o'clock. Um, and then coming up, there's several announcements in your bulletin. Uh, youth fundraiser coming up on the 30th. Uh, Michael 6 8 Book Club. Harper's Delight, which is three weeks uh, from today, June 11th, at the 11 o'clock service. Uh, we have Vacation Bible School coming up at the end of the month. Uh, summer Music Camp coming up in, in July. And then, of course, a Community district, district Day Camp coming up here in the middle of June. And so uh, if you have uh, kids in your life, uh, that are going to be home for the summer, if you have grandkids that are going to be with you at some point during the summer, if you have neighbor kids that you'd like to get rid of for a couple hours, one week, um, here's some opportunities coming up uh, for you to busy them as we start off the summer. Um, and I believe that's all the announcements uh, that I want to make this morning. Uh, and so now I'm going to have, uh, probably just have you stay where you are for a second, now you can come up. Well, I'm going to get you both at the same time. I'm just going to let Pearl sit for a second so she doesn't have to stand so long. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without Christ. Through confirmation and the reaffirmation of our faith, we, we, renew our we, we renew the covenant to declare our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's Holy Church. And so on behalf of the whole church, I present all of you, Adam McCloskey and Pearl Fleming, uh, to receive the sacrament of baptism and be received as professing members of the church. Adam and Pearl, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, answer, I do. Do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Adam and Pearl now before you in your care? There you go. With God's help. With no. Yeah, there you are. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom to the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, O the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's work to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Adam and Pearl to receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their life, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born to one of the Spirit, you may live the faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Step back, folks. You're not done yet. <laughs> Pearl, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works within you, having been born to water in the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. I tried to put warm water in it, but it had to sit for a while. No, you're, you're fine. Just give me Okay. All right. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister and brother in Christ. The through baptism. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as members of the family of Christ. And Pearl, as members of Christ's universal church, Will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend Adam and Pearl to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministries of the church, by our prayers, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified 
through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Let's welcome them. And now with joy and thanksgiving, let us offer to God the gifts that we have brought. We give thanks to you for all the gifts that you've given to us, and in praise and thanksgiving we offer you these gifts in return. Bless the givers and the gifts and those who have not to give. Use our gifts and us to do your work in the world, to spread your gospel throughout the earth, and to bring glory to your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
typically. This side of the sanctuary will recite the light type along with me. That side of the sanctuary will recite the bold type along with the choir. We'll sing the response together. something new can be kind of difficult, right? Whether it's starting school for the first time or changing grades or even finishing school when you get really big because high school kids are graduating today. That can be a really scary thing or getting a new pastor or anything. All these things can be, you kind of feel like, well, now what do we do? This is different and we're not sure about it, right? It's not necessarily bad. We're just not sure. Well, the disciples had that same feeling because today is Ascension Sunday, and it's the day that Jesus went back to heaven. Jesus went back to heaven, and the disciples, they wondered, well, what do we do now? You know, what do we do now that Jesus has gone back to heaven? Well, Jesus told them. He said, I want you to stay together. I want you to wait for the Holy Spirit because he was going to send the Holy Spirit to help them. And then I want you to go out and tell people about me. And so we stay together, we wait for the Holy Spirit, we go out and tell others. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. And he's promised to come back. And so until then, that's what we're supposed to be doing. So let's pray. 
Dear God, help us to remember when we don't know what to do, to stay together, to wait for you, and to go and share with others until you come back. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And here we go. All right, thank you. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Listen to the word of God. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions to the Holy Spirit, the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared, excuse me, he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John was baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them, Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, today is Ascension Sunday, the last Sunday of the Easter season of uh, before Pentecost next Sunday. Ascension Day is actually was actually this past Thursday, of course we celebrated on the following Sunday. This past Thursday was exactly 40 days after Easter. And so Jesus, so let me, let me unpack the timeline for you a little bit to help understand what was going on uh, with the disciples, maybe. The, the disciples uh, had to pay attention to Jesus when he said that he was going to die and rise again. And so Good Friday caught them completely by surprise. And they, they thought that was the end. It was over. This whole Jesus thing, we're, we're kind of done with it. And then, three days later, the resurrection. And Jesus is alive. And they thought, well, surely this, this is the, the end of, of the Jesus story. In fact, right here in this text, it, it said, they asked Jesus, you know, are you going to restore the kingdom? What they were expecting Jesus was going to do, well, before he died, and especially now that he'd risen, um, the disciples thought that Jesus was going to save Israel. That Jesus was going to that Jesus was going to expel the Romans to restore God's rule and Jewish independence. That's what they thought that Jesus was about. And so it made perfect sense to them that now that Jesus was risen, that that's what was going to happen. What they didn't know, because they still hadn't been paying attention, is that Jesus is the Savior of the whole world, and that through them, the message of salvation was going to go to the ends of the earth. In order to, for, for them to be able to do that, uh, he was going to have to return to heaven and send the Holy Spirit down. He had to go 
up so that he could be not just there, but everywhere. And this 40 days after Easter, when Jesus spent time with his disciples, proving that he had been raised, teaching them some final lessons, and now on Ascension Thursday, we come to the end of that 40-day period, and then we enter another 10-day period between Ascension and Pentecost, when Jesus promised them the Holy Spirit, but it had not yet arrived. It's hard for us sometimes to really enter into what, what the disciples must have been thinking, what the disciples must have been feeling, because we have the calendar in front of us, right? We, we know what's going to happen next, right? They didn't have the calendar in front of them. They had no idea what was going to happen next. And because they hadn't been paying attention uh, to Jesus. And so um, the disciples think that this is the end of the mission. They think it's the end of the mission. Jesus is risen. Israel is going to be restored. Uh, but it is only the beginning. And so the disciples are wondering, now what? What's next? Jesus, you died, and now you're alive, and now you're leaving. You know, you can see where they're, they're a bit confused. They're wondering, what's going to happen now? Well, they know that, they know that the kingdom's going to be restored. Jesus promises that. They just don't know when. In fact, um, Jesus, Jesus says, it's none of your business. If you really want me to boil this passage down to you, I can tell you two things Jesus said. Jesus said about when he was coming again, Jesus said, it's none of your business. And then he said, get to work. Those are the two things that Jesus said in this passage. It's none of your business and get to work, right? Um, and so that, that can be the sermon over. Okay, but this now what? This now what is actually, the answer to that is actually what Jesus had already said. The answer is in what Jesus had already said to them, just like all the other answers were in what Jesus had already said to them. Um, we're on the next, um, and then we're getting ready for the next one after that. So what did Jesus say? What did Jesus tell them? Jesus said, stay together. Stay together. Right? I, I tried to avoid preaching a series this Easter season, and I think I did a really good job of it, but two themes actually emerged for me that I had never seen before, and they had to do with the post-resurrection community of disciples. The first one was when we talked about Thomas, so-called doubting Thomas, and how in spite of his doubts, he stayed connected to the community of the disciples, and despite his doubts, they continued to welcome him. There's a powerful lesson for us there. That Thomas stayed connected, and the people stayed connected with him, even when he had some doubts. The second one was with the Emmaus disciples, who were giving up and quitting and going home, and Jesus appeared to them, and one of the things Jesus did, perhaps the major thing Jesus did in his appearance to them, is he returned them to the community. Go back into the community that you're trying to leave. So stay together. The disciples had to stay together. Second, he said, wait. Wait for the Spirit. Wait for the Spirit. Um, I've got a mission for you, but you know what? You guys are all awesome, and together you're really awesome, and you have a wonderful community, you have great talents, and you have great passion, and you have all of that, but what I'm about to ask you to do, you can't do on your own. You can't even do together without me. So wait for the Spirit. Wait for the power of the Spirit. Wait for the instruction of the Spirit. And again, they have no idea how many days it's going to take. They know it's going to be days. Jesus said it's going to be days, but they have no idea how many. So they waited for the Spirit. And they didn't miss it when it showed up. Maybe, maybe they were afraid they were going to miss it. But join us next week. You'll see the story. You, you, you aren't going to miss it. Right? And then, go into all the world. Go into all the world. Be my witnesses into the ends of the earth. Tell other people about me. Share the gospel. Meet needs. Serve people in my name. So stay together. Wait 
for the Spirit, go into all the world. Stay, wait, go. Stay, wait, go. Of course, their mission is now our mission. Their mission is now our mission, and their instructions are our instructions. And it seems that we live in a time where the only constant is constant change. We live in a time where it seems like we're, we're always between one thing and another, and it leaves us asking the question so often that the disciples ask as they stare into the sky, now what? Now what do we do? And I think of the change that's taken place in this congregation over the last several years. In the year before I came, March 17th, well, this tornado hit. I'm sure many of you stood in this very room, staring at the hole in the roof where the organ now sits, where the organ did sit, where the new organ now sits. And I imagine you were saying, now what? Now what do we do? How are we ever going to get ourselves out of this? But you did. How'd you do it? You stayed together. You waited for the answer. And you went and did the thing. You changed pastors. You went through COVID. And now you're getting ready to change pastors again. And you think, now what? Well, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what yet lies before us. But I do know how we're going to get there. We're going to get there. You're going to get there because you're going to do it without me now. You're going to stay together. You're going to stay together in the midst of conflict and compromise. Some are going to choose not to stay. That's okay. It's always been that way. Always will be. But most of you are going to choose to stay together in the midst of conflict and compromise. You're going to find a way to get along. You're going to find a way to go along. You're going to stay together. Because community is what is most important. You're going to wait for God to show up. You're going to wait to show up with His presence. You're going to wait to show up with His power. You're going to wait for Him to show up with His wisdom. You're going to wait for Him to give you the answers. And while you're waiting... Even though it might feel like a bit of a holding pattern, you're going to continue to build community. You're going to continue to do this so that you can do this. And when you have the answer, when you have the power, when you have the direction, you're going to go. You're going to do and you're going to do what you've always done. You're going to serve your neighbor. You're going to love Jesus. You're going to share the gospel. You're going to teach children. You're going to sing songs. You're going to worship. You're going to pray together. You're going to study the Bible together. You're going to go into the world to serve and share. You're going to stay together. You're going to stay together. You're going to wait on God. And you're going to go into the world. You're going to stay, you're going to wait, you're going to go. Their mission is now our mission. Their instructions are now our instructions. Stay together, wait for God, go into all the world. Let us be witnesses of Jesus to all the world. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, it seems that the only constant we have these days is constant change. God, we constantly stand on the old thing that seems to be dissolving and the new thing that doesn't yet seem to be fully formed. And we seem to be caught. We seem to be stuck. We seem to be holding on to one thing with one hand and another thing with the other. And we're left asking the question, now what? What do we do? Where do we go? How do we get there? 
the answer is, as it's always been, stay together, wait for God, go and serve and share. And so God, we pray that you would help us to stay together, to wait on you, and then to go and serve and share in all the world. God, we pray for this church. We pray that you'd bless us and help us to grow and prosper. Help us to worship and serve you in spirit and in truth and serve the world in your name. God, we pray for the whole body of Christ throughout the world. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for the United Methodist Church. We pray for this annual conference in our Bishop Kenitha, this district and our superintendent Dunn. We pray for our cabinet. We pray for uh, Pastor uh, Kayla, and, and we pray for the church in uh, Fort Madison, and God, for all the pastors and churches that are in transition during this time. God, we pray for all the people and places who are in need throughout the world today, all the sick, all the suffering. God, we pray for men and women who serve us at home and abroad. We pray for our military and for our veterans, for our law enforcement, our first responders, for our missionaries and relief workers and healthcare workers, and all those that serve our community. God, we pray for our world leaders at every level. We pray for our, economy, our government, our economy, and our environment. God, we pray for ourselves, our families, our church, our community, our nation, and the whole world, the blessings of peace, justice, health, safety, freedom, stability, prosperity, and holiness. Oh God, we pray that you hear the prayers of each and every heart that is worshiping with us this morning, either in person or online, as we lift up our prayers to you, either silently or aloud, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you've heard our prayers here this morning, and you hear the prayers that remain silent in our hearts. Oh God, you know our every need, and when we do not know how to pray, your spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. And God, we pray that you hear us now as we lift up our voices together in the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
receive this benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and remain with you always. Let us go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ, experiencing grace, exploring truth, expressing love. Amen.